Hi everyone, welcome to online piano learning. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sarah and I'm a pianist and piano teacher. My channel is all about learning piano and all the musicianship skills that are going to help you along the way. So if you are learning piano and this is something that would interest you, feel free to hit the subscribe button down below. Today we're going to be talking about piano technique specifically a really important concept that I mentioned briefly in some of my other videos, I think in the hand position or the good posture at the piano video, but I didn't really go into much detail. So let's talk about rotation. Not a lot of teachers talk about rotation, which is a shame because it's a really important concept that fixes a lot of technical issues. Before we talk about how to use rotation, let's talk about what rotation is. When we use rotation, we are using our forearm to help support our fingers and play more cleanly and with less effort. Rotation is from right here. So as you can see, I'm not moving my upper arm and I'm not moving my elbow. I'm just rotating back and forth from here and my wrist right here is actually not broken. It's not like this and it's not like this. That's the same motion as if you're opening a doorknob, for example. When you're opening a door, you're not going to move around your elbow or your wrist as much as use your forearm. That is the movement that we are looking for. Let's talk about five reasons why rotation is super useful and will help you a lot with your piano technique. The great thing about rotation is that it not only helps you with big jumps, such as when we're jumping from a low note to a high note, it also helps us when we're playing runs, scales, and other stepwise motion. Later in today's video, I will show you how to use rotation in a pentascale, a full one octave scale, as well as how to use it when you have a lot of runs in a piece and you want to make sure that every single note is nice and clean. The second great thing about rotation is that it allows you to feel free not only in your arm but also in your fingers. It's really useful to have fast fingers when you're playing piano but you might notice that if you rely on them too much you're not going to achieve the cleanliness in your playing that you want. Number three is that your fingers will get less tired. Of course, the more you use your fingers, imagine you're just using your fingers all the time and I already feel tired just by doing this. Whereas if I was using my arm in those movements, that would alleviate some of the fatigue. Number four is that you're going to feel less tension. We just mentioned that your fingers are going to get more tired if you just use your fingers. Now, what happens when your fingers get really tired is that they either tense up or they start to float upwards or your wrist starts to feel tense and all of these things are not going to be comfortable in your technique. And finally, number five, when you don't feel comfortable, the sound is not as good. Not only is rotation going to allow you to play cleaner, but it's also going to improve the tone and sound quality of your playing because you're putting in less effort. Therefore, there is not as much tension in your sound. When you're playing piano and you feel tense or you feel stressed, it's usually heard on the other side. So in your practicing, make sure that you try to get a technique that feels really good as well as sounds really good. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we play a pentascale with rotation. So a pentascale, in case you don't know what that is, it's the first five notes of a major scale, which we usually start with as beginners. And an example would be starting on C, we have C, D, E, F, and G, and you are in one hand position. A pentascale has five notes like this. And when we're using rotation, we're going to play one note. Then I'm going to rotate away from the second note. And then I'm going to play the second note rotate away, play this third, rotate away, play the fourth, 
rotate away, play the fifth, rotate away, play the next note, away, next, away, next, away, next. Now it might seem unnecessary to add all these extra movements. However, all these little tiny movements make a difference when we're playing at a faster tempo. So I'm using tiny little movements in order to add strength to each finger. The next thing we're going to do is to play a one octave scale. And the rotation here is a little bit different because we're going to start on C, rotate, rotate, and here it's different because I'm not going to do this again because look at this, I'm already close with my thumb. And then rotate, 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 and rotate. Backwards, rotate, rotate, rotate. Oh, freeze right here. Take a look, our third finger is already over the next note. Rotate, rotate, and rotate. As you can see, the only places where I change my rotation, instead of going back and forth, when I have to cross over with my thumb, I'm basically like this. So I don't need to do thumb under like this. This is a lot of effort and this muscle is going to be really sore after if we do a lot of this. And that's not very fast for a fast tempo. So what I rotate, 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 rotate. Stay here. And now let's try faster. you could do the same thing with your left hand. Let's try the left hand first, starting with our pentascale. So five, four, three, two, one. This is the C major pentascale. So we're starting on C, C, D, E, F, G. So the pinky. Do the one octave scale, so play, rotate, 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 oh here I am already on the next note, and here I am. So you see how in some places like here, I'm already ready for the next note. So I don't need to do this with my thumb. The same thing in the left hand. Now let's talk about a piece of music that I'm going to play for you. If we take a look at the second theme here. We have a scale here. It's a C major scale, but we're going to start on G, get to the C, and get to the F, just like we do in our C major scale. one good example of how we can practice our rotation. The next part I want to show you is a pattern, not quite a scale, but we have this passage right here. So 
So right here we have tempo nice and clean the last part I want to look at is the second theme in the last section when we have the same melody the second theme we have this F major scale, but again, we're starting from the fifth note, just like we did in C major, so. When we have our thumb crossing, so we're going to do this instead of a full rotation. So you see how rotate, rotate, keep the thumb, rotate, 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 We go faster. Anyways, that is the final run and very much like the first one, we have a scale and it's pretty much the same fingering we use in our scale except we're starting on a different note. So it's important to recognize that and do the same technique that we do in our scales. Here are three tips that will help you from practicing this incorrectly that are really easy to make. So the first one is when you play the note, you just place your finger on the note and then you rotate in between the notes. A common mistake would be to hit the note at an angle. And at that point, your hand has lost balance and that's not helpful. Mistake number two is what I mentioned before. So make sure that your elbow is not dancing, that your wrist isn't falling up and down. The last thing is going to be to practice slowly and exaggerate the motions when you are practicing slowly. And of course, if you practice it just one slowly and then you go back to your fast practice, then don't expect it to be changed right away. Of course, there will be a little bit of time that you need for your body to get used to the changes in your technique. And in a few days, if you practice it like this, then you just let go, practice the, the whole run or the whole scale, and you should feel a difference under your hand. And the movements won't be those huge movements once you have your finished product. Just try to exaggerate when you are practicing. No matter what you do, remember that you want to try to get a comfortable, relaxed technique. And being relaxed doesn't mean that you just completely relax all your muscles. Because remember, we need some kind of tension to make our muscles move and, and keep the structure in our joints. But I want you to avoid thinking about tension. Think about feeling completely relaxed and free at the piano because that is your ultimate goal. Anyways, if you have any questions about rotation, feel free to let me know in the comments. I hope that this helps you out because I know a lot of people don't talk about this. However, having a healthy technique is something that's really important to make sure that you don't injure yourself or develop unhealthy habits at the piano. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button below and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And let me know if there's a specific technique that's been bugging you that you would like me to explain. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.